Hello, I'm Philip Kaufman, an Associate Professor of Veterinary Entomology at UF IFAS. Today we're going to talk about a group of very tiny flies well known to people in Florida, particularly those who have horses. These tiny flies go by many names, but most commonly are called biting midges. They also have the names punkies, noceums, and five O's for those living on the Gulf Coast. There's one genera called Culicoides, which contains over a thousand species just in itself. In Florida, we have about 48 species in the genera Culicoides. These are the important ones for biting people and their horses. These biting midges are flies, and because they're flies, they go through four life stages. The egg, the larva, the pupa, and an adult. It's the adult stage that blood feeds, and only the females blood feed. They do that in order to get protein for their eggs. Although there are four dozen species in Florida, they're largely interchangeable as far as most folks are concerned. These are tiny flies about one to three millimeters in size, which is about the size of a poppy seed. Although these insects are very, very small, they have a very painful bite both to people and to livestock. This is because unlike mosquitoes, which have a very slender mouth part, these insects will slash the skin open in order to cut capillaries and pool blood that they then suck up. And now let's hear from a faculty member in the College of Veterinary Medicine about how to deal with these insects in a practical manner. Hi, I'm Martha Malicote. I'm an equine veterinarian and I practice at the University of Florida's Large Animal Hospital at the College of Veterinary Medicine. And we're here today to talk a little bit more about Culicoides midges. Um, so these midges are a problem really throughout Florida and honestly throughout the southeastern U.S. and the Gulf Coast. Um, the adult flies like to live in the sandy soil that we have on the coastlines and they lay their eggs and the larvae live in areas that are low-lying water, water marshy areas and that's where those larvae mature. So you can see that a lot of Florida that probably is affected by a big population of these midges. And those individual midges in their bites are painful, but ultimately that's not what really causes the problem for our equine patients. Ultimately, you'll find out of a population of horses, say 20 on a farm, one or two of them have a particular hypersensitivity or allergic reaction to these culicoides bites. And those particular horses are really severely affected. So the way that looks from a clinical perspective is that these horses are super itchy, profoundly itchy, and our medical term for that is pruritus. Um, and these horses have such serious pruritus that they are constantly itching, and it'll be very localized areas for some horses, the mane, the tail head, along their belly, what we would call the ventrum. Um, but for some, it can be so serious that they actually lose a lot of their hair. They're itchy just all over. Um, so as a result of all of that itching that's constantly going on during much of the season that these midges are out, they will get secondary skin infections, they will get uh, thickened skin in those areas, we call it lichenification, it's just literally thicker skin right there that the hair doesn't grow back very well on. And these horses are really profoundly affected, it becomes a welfare problem because they're so itchy. So there's some steps you can take for, to, for treating these horses. First and foremost, it's really important to get your veterinarian involved. And your home veterinarian that treats your horses every, uh, you know, regularly at your farm is the ideal person because they're familiar with your environment. Um, but they can help you make the diagnosis that this particular horse is hypersensitive. And there are some prescription medications that we use for treating these horses. Uh, but in addition to that, there are some management tools that can be of huge help. Um, these midges are most active during dawn and dusk, and so you can put the horse in a stall at those times, um, ideally with some strong fans. The Culicoides midges are terrible flyers, they're not very athletic, so if you put a strong fan on them, they're much more likely to avoid that area. Um, and then a lot of use of quality fly sprays is really helpful. Um, ideally a product that has 2% permethrin in it is what you'd use and reapply daily at least, and use it very liberally. Some of these horses are so severely affected that we end up saying they might have a better quality of life if they moved away from the coast, which is a, t a you know, really drastic step. So anything you can do to prevent that from happening can be really helpful. So for some more information and help with managing this serious condition, you can seek advice from your local veterinarian. They can help you with medications and prevention. You can also visit this website for more information.